everybody, and welcome to a surprise Wild Ride with Steve-O. That's right, nobody expected this to drop on a Monday, but it did, because we want to give everyone a chance to catch it before the big fight this weekend. What big fight? It's Jake Paul versus this week's guest, Ben Askren. That's right. I mean, it's about as big a thing in the YouTube world, the MMA world. I mean, in the world. So, this one's really exciting, and big thanks to Ben Askren for squeezing us into his schedule, because man, his life is pretty crazy right now. Let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Askren. Yeah, dude. <laughs> How's it going, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, got a workout on this morning, and then I go hang out with my family this afternoon. Awesome, man. Great. I want you to meet my co-host, Scott Randolph. I know you guys just introduced each other. Talking about Alaska? Before. What's up, Scott? Up at the front of the van, we've got the gorgeous Paul Brisky. What's going on, Ben? How are you? Yeah, and, I'm doing well. Yeah, Great to dude. meet you. And, and, man, thank you so much for doing this, dude. But we've never met. I just tweeted at you. I'm a big fight fan. I'm with the whole MMA community, just, like, counting on you to win this big fight <laughs> going on. Well, I'm a big jackass fan. I, you know, I used to do the pranks and shit in high school, um, you know, emulating you guys. I didn't get quite, quite as crazy. You know, my favorite one was you put dog shit in a purse and you put a couple dollar bills hanging out and almost <laughs> always... The car would stop, pick up the dog shit, and they'd drive off. And then, you know, like a minute later, you'd see them going, ah, it's dog shit. Yeah, the old poo dollar. That, <laughs> the old poo dollar. That, that's a variation of the poo dollar I'm not aware of. <laughs> um, so, yeah, dude, uh, I guess my, my first question would be, um, win, lose, or draw, does this Jake Paul fight earn you more money than your whole previous fight career? Comparable? Less? Uh, I'm, so, I'm making more for one fight than I ever have before. Yes, it's, it, man, it's interesting the way the world works because, like, <laughs> oh, I retired and I meant it, and I said, hey, you know, if something interesting happens, I'll probably come out and do it. But I, that meant an MMA fight to me, or possibly a wrestling match, because that's my background. At no point did I think I'd be boxing a YouTuber. But um, they, you know, they at first it was kind of like funny thing in social media, and then they called me. And it's like. I don't know. It sounds like fun time to me, and they're going to pay me a whole bunch of money. I don't think, why wouldn't I do it? It's a no right. brainer. Um, so so uh, th that's really interesting to me. You, you said uh, getting paid more than I've ever been paid for a fight, yeah. right? But you've had many, many fights in your career, right? So, so th yeah, it was this is 22. just 22 when you began professional fighting. Mm hmm. And you're yeah. 36 now? Yes. Wow, dude. It's uh, yeah. so so. This is just another fight. It's the highest paying fight, but it's not like this is the the biggest payday, like compared to everything put together. Because I, I no, I not 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 compared. No, not compared to put that everything put together. Just just single singular fight. Um, and you know, to me, it's I, I don't want to say. Uh, well, I oh a dog. Nice. I should have brought my dog. <laughs> She's upstairs. Um, I don't want to say less interesting, but um. You know, in MMA, my whole purpose was to prove I was the, the best in the world. And I never quite got there. You know, I won belt in Be uh, Bellator and, and won championship. And I, I never quite quite got to the title in the UFC. But that was kind of my whole purpose. So every fight mattered, you know. And now this is like, hey, it's a boxing match. Like, if I win, outstanding. If I lose, eh, that sucks. But I never, like, wanted to be the best box in the world. I never I never even thought I was going to be a boxer, right? This right. happened. Exactly. I got to yeah. say, too, that, that in defeat, I think uh, – that that's where you really won me over, man. When you had that crushing knockout with Masvidal, and you just immediately got on Twitter and tweeted, "Well, that sucked." Yeah. I just <laughs> fucking fell in love with that. I mean, I honestly, I honestly, suck. I I'm I'm sure you know, but like people handle defeat in different ways, you know. And yeah. I just thought that that was indicative of a, a really well-adjusted guy with humility and like hey man you know what do you want that sucked and uh yeah. you know that that won me over and, and you know i mean hey dude i i enjoy fighting i i enjoy the whole game and uh yeah, i respect you a lot man so again thank you for doing this yeah uh, I, I appreciate it so uh, are you guys really surfing in alaska because that seems <laughs> like maybe like you could go somewhere better to surf <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the time this airs, we're going to be surfing in Alaska. Like, we will be, yeah, they're, that's so funny. Even dude. though right now we're like 100 feet from the beach. Like, we're very close. <laughs> but yeah, we're parked in uh, our warehouse in, in Carlsbad, California at the moment. We leave for Alaska tomorrow. And um, 
the water, I believe, is going to be... We're going to be 40. We prepped for it to I, I, be like 35, 36, but he was like, oh it's going to be God. 40. We're like, thank God. I heard it was 39. I don't know. Well. 39, 40. But, but yeah, <laughs> is like, there like better waves there? or why? I mean, why? I think the waves are going to be decent. The, uh-huh. And, and uh, I got into surfing a while back. I suck at it terribly. But uh, I got into a hobby of traveling the world and getting photographs of surfing in different countries. And I, I call this my surf passport. And it's been a little bit of a bucket list item for me to get a photo surfing on a wave with fully snow-covered mountains in the background. Mm. And uh, this is this is what it's all about. It's just singular in purpose. Well, we had this trip <laughs> planned like a year ago, and then the pandemic hit. And then the yeah. guy hit us up. He's like, hey, so you guys still planning to come next week? And we're like, oh, shit, we still got to go to Alaska. Uh, yeah. That's funny. I love it. I went to, I went to Seward, actually. My, my thing was I that's wanted to go to national parks. Um in the United States, and then I, I said before thirty, and then I said only in the continental U.S. But I did go to a few in Alaska, um, and, and we went to the one just it's off, right off Seward, and it's called Kenai Fjords. And I got to see a glacier like flop, flop down in the water, and oh. it was like the most badass thing ever. It was so freaking cool! Wow. Yeah, dude. we fly into Anchorage, we drive to Seward, we get on a boat, and we're gonna be just cruising around on a boat for three or four days. I think it's safe to say that nobody gives a fuck about what we're going to do in Alaska. We got Ben Ashkin here. I got. For the I care about it. I'm so interested. Ben cares, dude. <laughs> for the people who are watching this rather than just listening, can we get a better look at this incredible robe you're wearing? Yeah, this. So I got. I got this given to me by one of my sponsors yesterday, and like you know, I, I kind of feel ridiculous wearing it right now, but it is like the most comfortable thing ever. So uh, I was actually. I got I got I got home. I worked out. I showered. It's kind of like rainy and shitty, so I was cold. So I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that robe on. And then I'm like, I'm gonna look ridiculous when I go on the show. And then I'm like, eh. Are you whatever. gonna wear this coming out? It like as if it looks like something a boxer would wear yeah, when they enter the arena. It's a boxing robe. Yeah. Ah, cool. Do you yeah. have your Do you have your walkout music already picked? So I've I've had the same thing since I've been a sophomore in college, uh, and it's we we want the funk. There you go. Ah, dude, yeah. I, I, I love it. Now you said one of my sponsors gave me this robe. Um, yeah. how, how many sponsors you got? How does that work? Oh, I, I got, I got a question. So UFC, UFC, you can't really have any in cage sponsorship. You know, they, they kind of control it all uh-huh. at the top. Uh, but with this, I've been able to get a whole bunch. So I, I got a, a, a ton of. I don't like seven, maybe. I'm not. I'm not sure. Is exactly. that part of the my, reason? My manager Helen is that he's. They're all my shorts. Is that part of the reason why is boxers make more money is because they're allowed more spo- outside sponsorships? Well, so I, I would I would like to see the math. I think boxers at the very, very top make way more money. But then in the middle and lower rungs, I think mixed martial artists are significantly more well paid. I mean, I, I know I've seen really high level boxing fights where at the bottom, you know, the top is many millions and the bottom, it's like one thousand dollars for the mm-hmm. fight. And UFC base pay is. Uh, 12 to show up and 12 to win. So UFC, the lowest, the lowest of the low in UFC is $24,000 per fight if you win. Jesus, yeah, dude. dude. Got you. So, so, yeah. so uh, you answered my question. The the sponsors are for this fight in particular. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have a few things for other stuff that I, you know, like say I do a, I do a crypto podcast on Monday and I have sponsors for that, for example. Nice. Are you guys dude. into crypto yet? We're, 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 we're getting into doing an NFT. So we're, we're getting ready to launch uh, Steve's first NFT. I don't think that that really, I mean, I guess Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's related, right? I mean, if it's we're still talking yeah. blockchain. I don't really love, so I'm actually doing an NFT, but I don't personally love NFTs, but I always say like, who am I to judge what other people think is valuable? Um, you know, and that's kind of what NFTs are is they, they, people see them as scarce assets that are going to be, you know, one of a kind or, or a very limited amount and that they're going to be worth a lot more in, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. So, but the reason why I brought that up is because I invested into Ethereum because <laughs> NFTs are so popular right now could, because yeah, I figured great, like yeah. it's the currency and it's, it's only going to go up if more people buy, right? If Tom Brady's having a yes. NFT gallery, more people are going to be using the Ethereum. Yes. You like Ethereum. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Ethereum's great. They, I mean, they, that's uh man, it's, it's the second biggest after Bitcoin. I don't actually view it as like a currency. It's, it's a smart contract platform. So there's just so many things that can be done there. Um, I don't know. And I guess maybe some people argue and say it is a currency. I don't really think it is, but, 
Hmm. Yeah, it's great. It's a tremendous thing to go way up in value, I think. How long have you been into cryptocurrency? Is this a recent thing or have you been on it for a minute? I got in in 2017. Oh, nice. I red pilled one of my friends a long, long time ago. <laughs> Uh, about stuff I probably can't say on air because, you know, you guys get pulled off YouTube or some shit. Um, wow. And then in 2017, he said, hey, there's this thing called Bitcoin. Here's what it's all about. And I got it right away. You know, like I just I don't like the Fed. I, I don't like the politicians controlling our money and the Bitcoin's out of the scope of the politicians. So I understood it immediately and I loved it. All nice. right, wow. Dude. So you got in on Bitcoin in 2017. I would imagine yeah. that's looking pretty good now. It's looking very good. <laughs> wow. Looking so so very you're good. telling us, Ben, that you're rich. <laughs> I'm doing pretty, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm Steve-O rich, but I'm doing pretty well in life. Yeah, I, yeah I, what I, is I, the definition of rich? Like, at what point in money do you, like, I'm rich? Yeah. Is I, it, like, one million? <laughs> is it five million? Well, I always feel like it's, um, it's arbitrary based on your spending habits because, like, say, you know, Mike Tyson's the most famous case. He made $400 million, but he got used to spending many million millions a year and then all of a sudden he had none you know so it's like right. you know if you spend five million dollars a year you're gonna need to make at least six million to be rich but if you spend you know two hundred fifty thousand a year you're only gonna make five hundred thousand and you're rich that's, that's, that's very astute i like that yeah and i love that when you, you're talking about the cryptocurrency <laughs> it, it says, I, I believe this in these theories and it's, it's just what mark cuban told you last week <laughs> mark cuban was so late to the party mark cuban was bashing crypto till like two months ago or something yeah yeah are we late <laughs> yeah. to the party? Like, that's how I feel buying crypto. I'm like, ah, like maybe I'll get something out of it, but it feels like maybe I'm too late. Or is the big burst still yet to happen, you think? Like the big I growth? Think, well, I think it's like the future. Like, I mean, maybe I'm a little too far down the rabbit hole, but I think like Bitcoin is going to be the world reserve currency in the next 10 years. Wow. Mm. Well, yeah. you are. I think it'll be something other than the American dollar. That's the, for yeah. sure. Well, it's, it's, it's just simple. This really smart guy named Michael Saylor was on my podcast. He bought. He, he trained, turned his whole company's cash reserves into Bitcoin. And he simply said to me, and this is the best line of I've heard in like 70 episodes. He said, Ben, who do you trust to make your money? The politicians or the engineers? That's wow. Good I like yeah, that. And I, I came into the warehouse yesterday and I told somebody that I bought Ethereum and, and, and you know, I asked him if he was in the cryptocurrency. And he's like, dude, Dogecoin all the way. <laughs> and I looked into Dogecoin <laughs> and it's a, it's a fake currency that they made up that like blew up. Is that is that what it is? Um, I, so I would just say Dogecoin doesn't do anything you, in my mind, doesn't do anything unique that Bitcoin or, or some of the other ones can't do. Um, but it's got this really cool logo. So it's like, I call it like a meme coin, like, you know, uh, Elon Musk tweets about it and then it goes up like 600%. Cause I think when Elon Musk tweeted about it, it was worth less than a penny per coin, Oh, Jesus. you know? So wow. someone can go, Ooh, I'm buying a thousand Dogecoin and they spent like 10 bucks or something. Wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, on this Jake Paul fight, when it yeah. like uh, the the pay per view is gonna probably be bigger. Well, what is the last pay per view that Jake Paul fought on was where Mike Tyson came out of retirement to do the exhibition match with Roy Jones Jr. And how many yeah. was that? That was that was like a monumentally really fucking big. Like, what was it, like two point something million buys? I, yeah, I feel it was like two million, which is, I mean, which for a pay-per-view is like insane. What was Logan, uh, uh, KSI and Logan Paul? That was a different deal because it was on Triller. Which one is this one no, on? No, I thought that was on, wasn't that one on YouTube? Oh, no, that one was on Days or something. Like, I don't know. It, it wasn't, I don't know what it was on. Or, 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 or Mike Tyson was on Triller. Was, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, yeah, I remember Tyson we watched was on it on Triller. YouTube. Ty Tyson was on Triller, but it was like a proper like $50 buy for a pay-per-view. Yeah, but so you got that's what this one is too. Right. So, so how many views was that? Like how many uh, paper or buys? It, it was two million times fifty. Like Ben. Yeah. <laughs> What's You're, that? That's a hundred million dollars. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Holy shit. And uh, and and so this one doesn't have like Mike Tyson's coming out of retirement. Yeah. Like, but it's got. It's, it's heavily hyped. All MMA community is watching it. Entire yeah. MMA community boxing. Like, do we have a projection for how many buys? Uh, that's that's not that's not my air of expertise. Right. No, I, we don't. But they also they're also trying to do it's like kind of like they do something different. You know, I'm just there to fight, but they're doing these concerts too. So like right. Bieber's Bieber's performing. <laughs> um, oh my god! And a bunch of other really really I like some of the other people like are really popular, but I don't. I'm, it's kind of like not my era, so I don't I don't really know them. You know, I'm like a, right. 
uh, DMX and for rest in peace, oh, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers kind of guy. Right. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was a big, big component to the Mike Tyson one. Um, and and I'm buddies with Mike Tyson. I I love mm -hmm. his his guy Rob and. And I, I reached out, like just dying to know what these music, musical artists were being paid. A lot. And it's gotta uh, be a lot, right? I think Between every every fight, there was like Wiz, was it Wiz Khalifa? Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't Snoop know. Snoop Dogg. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like but, who's getting more, Ben or Bieber? You know. He didn't tell me like from an artist, an artist to artist, but uh, but absolutely the budget for the musical performances was in significantly in the millions. Shit. If I'm gonna pay more Bieber, I'll be so freaking pumped. My life will be made. <laughs> That's so good. But uh, do you do you have any like even a small percentage of uh, of in interest in the actual pay per view? Like, you gotta get no, I, I didn't get a percentage. Um, you know, again for me, it was like this. They offered me a lot of money, and it was uh, sounded like fun. You know, I used to box my friends for for free on Friday nights, and I thought it was a good time. Like, hey, that was a fun night. Right. So now someone's going to pay me a gigantic amount of money to do it. I figure I'd say yes. I mean, hey, dude, I, I, I'm rooting for you. I see the philosophy of it. And, um, you know, like. I feel like, wait, Steve-O, did you guys do some boxing episodes on Jackass? I feel like you did. I did. We did stilt boxing. Yeah, you uh, fought. Uh, me, yeah. me against Ryan Dunn on stilts. And, um, I remember that. And then Knoxville fought Butterbean in the store. Knoxville oh, that yeah. was. Yeah. Which he, was, he didn't really yeah. fight Butterbean. He took punches from Butterbean. Right. And he snored. Right, yeah, that was uh, that, that that was tough to watch, um, you know. Oh, I, I thought, and and for, you know, forgive me, but I think I'm with a lot of people that I thought, as far as like who in the professional fighting world Jake Paul could have called out, that it was like really rather genius to say, "Oh, I'll, I'll box Ben Askren," you know, because of yeah. course your your strength is is with wrestling, um, and. I mean, dude, it is, it's fucking pretty, pretty genius. And now having said that, I think that that really squarely makes you really important in the equation. Because, you know, if, if you're looking for an advantage in boxing, then, like, who else do you have other than Ben Askren, who is a huge name in combat sports, yeah. but, like, notoriously not for striking? There's not really anybody else. I think he could have got a percentage. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just like I said, I'm doing well in life, so I wasn't Good. all that <laughs> concerned about it. Um, seemed fair, so I said yes. Uh, they were going, they're really going after Dylan Dennis, who's like McGregor's lackey, and he's got a pretty good social media following. But you know, I, I did bring this up with um, in the press conference. Jake was like a child; he wouldn't shut up and let me talk. Um, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I watched Jake's, some of that too. It's so bad. So he's kind of like a bully, though, and it's like. You know, I was I was retired. I was four months, three and a half months out of my hip surgery. So like, I was not training at all. So, yeah, obviously he wasn't trying to pick the toughest guy he could pick. He was trying to pick the easiest guy, which could give him some legitimacy. Right. Um, and I think that's pretty obvious for me to zoom out and just see that, you know, for sure. Um, and that being said, even being the easiest guy he can pick, I think it's probably still too tough of a guy. I think he's going to get in there and, um, you know, I think. Boxing is strange. I've been in I've been in boxing for like three months now. The community is kind of strange. And I think he's got these guys around him who are just telling him that he's the best in the world. He's so good. And to the point where he's almost started to believe it. And so when he gets in, you know, in front of someone and they won't go away and they're fighting back, he's gonna start panicking. He's not really really know what to do. Can you talk about your game plan at all? Yeah. You want the scoop? Well, here at Wild Ride, we give you the scoop. So you got the scoop. What else do you got? Do you got Bush? Oh, man, I feel sorry for you if you do. But I know for a fact that if you've got your Manscaped products, Bush isn't going to be a problem this summer now, is it? And let me tell you, this Lawnmower 3.0, I've had it for ages. I've been using it like crazy. Still going strong. I mean, sure, I can charge it when I need to, but I can't believe the battery on this thing. I also can't believe how effective it is at trimming my pubic afro. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, man, I'm ready to have my ball sack in a ball sack beauty contest because this thing trims it so nice. Plus, it smells great, too, because I've got my Manscaped ball deodorant. I'm telling you, if you're not 
taking care of your nether regions with Manscaped. You're blowing it. And guess what? I got a special deal for you, exclusive. If you go to manscaped.com slash Stevo, you're getting 20% off your order and free shipping. You can't beat it. Plus, it's summertime. Time to wear a little less. Time to get naked a little sooner. Yeah, you want to look good. So one more time, go to manscaped.com slash Stevo for 20% off your order and free shipping. Now, let's get that scoop. You know, because we've never seen him take a punch. And yeah. we know that you've been hit and you keep going. And that's your advantage, too, is that, like, you, you've been in the fire before. Yeah, I mean, so my my strategy would obviously be to get close and make it a tough fight. I'm not going to stand and try to have pretty boxing. Um, get in there and make it ugly, make it dirty, land kind of like the dirty boxing, clinch strikes, that type of stuff. And yeah, to to that point, we've never seen him really go very long. We've never seen him get someone good. We've never seen him get hit. We've never seen him get tired. So there's all these big, big question marks with him, right? Like how is he, what's going to happen? And listen, I said, I, I, I was at Freddie Roach's and I boxed with one really, really good guy. I'm like, dude, I don't want to be in there with that guy. That guy's going <laughs> to fucking kill me. Like, you know? So if for some reason he is like the best in the world, it's going to be a long night for me. I just, I think that's like really, really, really unlikely. I think uh, it's incredible that it's such a mystery that we, that we don't know. And yeah. that's probably why it's yeah. going to do so well. How, how's the training different from this in, in MMA? Like how you're not weight cutting or are you weight cut? Like what, what's no. Yeah, I'm not weight cutting because it's like, hey, you're gonna fight a YouTuber. It's not like there's some league and I get to pick what weight class I'm gonna go. It's like, hey, there's there's this one YouTuber guy. Here's the weight class. Do you want it or not? Um, so I'm fighting at 190. I wrestled at uh, 174. Fought at 170. So yeah, it's big for me. Um, what are you normally yeah. walking around at before uh, before you cut to 170? So usually when I'm when I'm like working out in shape, 183 to 185. Um, I, like I said, I was retired. I had my hip surgery. You guys want to see this badass scar? Yeah, sure. dude. We love scars. Oh, wow. yeah. Shit. That's a long yeah, one. Yeah, so I got my hip redone in September. So literally, like, when I want to say that pay-per-view, the Tyson one that you're talking about was um, late November. Like, I literally wasn't allowed to do anything for three months. Like, not, nothing, nothing. And then at three months, I got to start riding a bike and that that type of thing. And so when I first, you know, first started training, I was really heavy because I, I hadn't been allowed to do anything for like four and a half months. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, dude. <laughs> with um, with Jake having sort of all these yes people around him, like so in many. some ways, does that help him? I've heard Mike Tyson talk about like, he's like, I would have to almost be like delusional to go in these fights and just think I'm so good. Like he was like, I would purposely sort of be delusional. And like, is, is that unrealistic belief in yourself in some ways a benefit? Um, well, so I, I, so I would say, I think, yes, it is important to have those type of thoughts when you're going into competition. Cause the last thing you want in competition is to like doubt yourself, have anxiety. Um, I mean, for you guys, you guys came from extreme sports. So it's like, you don't want to be on top of the half pipe saying, oh my God, I'm going to freaking fall. I'm going to, if you're thinking like that, you're probably going to fall, right, you right, know, right. you either want to have a clear mind where you're not really thinking about anything. Uh, and you're just focused solely on the execution of the technique. Uh, or, you know, you want to say, I'm going to freaking crush this. One of those two things, you know? Um, so uh, to a little bit, yes, it's semi-beneficial when you step in the ring, but the, the real huge issue, uh, becomes is if that doesn't come true, right. Then what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? You gotta if, be able to back it up. It works if it's great four, if it four and a half minutes in, <laughs> yeah. it's a 24 minute fight and it's not coming true. Then what? Sure. You know, like those guys can't fight for him. Their cheers really aren't going to help him in the fight. Like it might help him get through training, but in a real fight, it's got to be you saying like, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking go get this guy. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm tough enough. Yeah. It can't right. be them. They can't help you at that point. Now we've seen like with uh, any kind of like celebrity boxing, it, it almost seems part for the course that like you get some high profile professional boxer to like be in your corner and and mm. and train you right like yeah did uh 
and, and, and and as I say that, I can't think of any examples. But, I, mean, I, know I was that, trying to help you out there. I couldn't think I, of it either. I, I, well, like, uh, I remember, okay, so, Soldier Boy was going to fight Chris Brown, and he teamed Soulja up. Soldier Boy and Chris Brown were going to fight? I think they were. Huh. I, th I think they were. And uh, one of them was with Mike Tyson, while the other one was with Floyd Waymather. <laughs> Waymather. Uh, um, but, uh, but, but, but evidently... Uh, you know, Masvidal was uh, you know training Jake Paul for something or other, which kind of makes no sense. Um, yes. But do, have you had any like you said you got in with a, a pretty good guy? But have you had any like famous boxers like, hey, look at me, I'm with this guy? Um, I, so I went out to Freddie Roach's for uh, I was out there for a week. It was man, it, it was really cool. He's uh, he's brilliant, um, just super smart. A lot of fun, but you know, I felt like he was, um, I felt like I didn't want to drag him into the circus. Like that's like a legendary honorable coach. This is a, this is a circus. I don't want to bring him to the circus. Like I'll just, I'm going to show up and fight Jake Paul. And if I could beat him up, I could beat him up. If I can't, I go back to coaching wrestling. Like I was doing before. Right. Oh, okay. Wow. I mean, there yeah. you go. That's a, a well-adjusted, healthy guy. And, uh, <laughs> and, and with that, I've been like speaking of Masvidal. Clearly, I brought him up. Um, yeah. Do uh, like I, I see everything posted about Masvidal via Ariel, Ariel Helwani, like you know everything yeah. else, and I follow all the MMA stuff. It just seems like the comments are almost like universally. Wow, how'd this guy go from like like the most popular guy to like the most hated guy in like, say it's just like, we've watched this like fall from grace, this, yeah. this like uh rise and fall of, of Masvidal. And, uh, you know, throughout the whole time with all the like aggressive shit talking he did towards you and really just kind of disrespect, um, bullying, if you will, mm -hmm. like you never seemed to even like, it just seemed to roll off of you. You were never like resentful or any, or anything, right? That's the impression yeah. that I got. Well, I, I think, um, so I think that this, it's, it's really interesting. The public, public sentiments are really funny thing. Cause my wife is like, she was dying laughing last night because it was like for a long time in MMA, I was not liked because I was this outsider who, who Dana White didn't want to give my, me my shot in the UFC. And I was kind of like, it was semi disliked, you know, and now like, I guess, cause I'm going against Jake Paul, people freaking love me, <laughs> or maybe it's cause they got to know who I really am. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm still the same guy that I was 10 years ago. Maybe that's why, but it's like this, the public sentiment changes so fast. Um, but with the George thing, I actually have this saying, I think I might need to trademark it or something. Maybe I make a book out of it, but I use it with my kids. You never want to tie your ego to your outcome. And wow. so like when you're going into a contest, you can't control the outcome of that contest. You can try as hard as you want, which is, that's what I want. I want great effort, right? You can fight, you can, tr you can prepare for it, but you can't control the outcome. And if right. you tie your ego to the outcome and then all of a sudden you get an outcome that you don't want, do you think you're a terrible person and you suck at life? And the answer is like, no, you're the same person. So you can't tie your ego to that. That's great. Mm. In recovery, yeah. we say stay out of the results. Mm -hmm. But I, I really what? like- What do you say? We say stay out of the results. It's not, mm. We're not in the results yeah. business, you know, we're in the, yeah. the, the intention we're in the, the, you know, but tying your ego to it's another, another level to, it, which is great. And man, I just saw this, this ridiculous thing that, that, uh, Masvidal said, like Colby Covington's not a draw in any way, like no way I'd fight him. Like I'm going to be selling out pay-per-views. He, nobody wants, and it was just like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I, I, I've, I've said this a million times that I, I'm so invested in disliking Colby Covington that I just absolutely want him to win and win and win and win so that he'll always be there for me to dislike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Well, I would, and I would say I, George does. I don't think George wants to fight Colby. Exactly, that's exactly what's win. going on. If you're gonna be the BMF. If you're going to be the BMF and you're going to say your game, Brett, and you'll fight anyone, then you fight anyone. Then you, why, why are you talking about how big of a draw it is? Because you're supposed to not care. You're supposed to be the BMF. You're supposed to say, <laughs> I don't really give a shit. Show up on July 12th and then we'll be there. Right. You're not supposed to make excuses that they're not, I'm not a big enough draw. It's ridiculous. Right. And, and uh, it's absolutely a fucking massive draw.
For yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Colby's almost got that Jake Paul in it where it's like you, you want to see him lose, right? Because you, he's, oh, yeah. he's but Colby's, been, played I mean, heel Col so well. Colby's Col boxing is fucking impressive when yeah. he stood with – was it uh, Marty or Camaro? What's the what's the real name? Well, I call – so listen uh, – and here's hey, let me let me clear the air on this because I know you know what no one's asked me that question. Yeah, when I knew him, I knew I here I knew him for a while. His name was Marty. Like I, that was just a, it was just this dude. This, this dude's name was Marty. That's all. Like there's no, there's no disrespect, no nothing. And so when I first got signed to UFC and someone asked me about him, I said something something Marty. I didn't mean anything by it. I even I think I said he was a good fighter or, or some something to that effect, you know. And then he fucking got pissed at me, and I'm like. Because uh, I called you by me. your name uh, that you, you were like, so then of course I started taunting him about it because he got mad. So I had to keep going, right? But it's like I thought, I, like a long time, a long, long time. I don't think he's cool anymore, but a long time ago, like he was just another wrestling dude that was cool, that worked hard, everything was good, and like I thought I didn't think there was any issue. I said Marty, and then he wanted to freaking fight me over it. So then I just kept calling him Marty. <laughs> did, did you ever wrestle him back in the day? Uh, no, um, he was a little tiny bit younger than me, but I, uh, and listen, I'm, again, I, this is just me being honest and you guys can go look at the results if you want. He, he really wasn't that good. Like he wasn't bad, but he also wasn't that good. Like he wasn't challenging to make world teams. He was more like a guy that was say like number eight through number 12 or somewhere in there. And that, that's not my bias. You can literally, there's a website called track wrestling. You can go to track wrestling. You can type in his name. You can see all of his results. So no, we never wrestled. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, going back to the your Masvidal fight, I was like, when you get knocked out like that, like what? I, you, you, so I, you wake up at some point, and you have to learn what happened. Like, is there even yeah. a memory of it? You know, like yeah, the, of, of the actual knockout, the no. fight or the knockout. So or, that's the only time I've ever been stunned, knocked out, anything like that in my, in my whole life. Well, Lawler um, got you pretty good. I, I'd count Lawler but he as wasn't a stun. Out. No, yeah, but, but I, 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 I to, to, in my mind, and yeah, who knows that maybe something's going crazy. I remember the whole thing. Like, okay. I remember the whole thing. I remember right. my thought mm, process no, no gaps. of everything right. that was going on the entire time, you know? Sure. Um, and with George, I, I've told this story, I think a couple of times now. Uh, but you know, I, I like, I know I was awake, right. But I wasn't like, my brain wasn't recording things. The first thing that recorded, I opened my eyes or, you know, or I find everything starts clicking again. I saw Luke Rockhold. I thought, fuck, Luke Rockhold got knocked out. I must be in the hospital. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know? And then I looked up, like, here's my wife. And I'm like, fuck, am I in the hospital? And she's like, yeah. And then I remember, like, feeling myself. And it wasn't like that sweaty, grimy feeling you have, like, when you worked hard and then, you know, you cool <laughs> off. I'm like, shit, it didn't last very long, huh? And she's like, nah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, all right, what happened? So that's, you know, when, that's the first memory, and you're all that was the way it. My, Yeah, and then I'm like, well, hey, I feel fine. And then they're, they're like, hey, the results are fine. And then then uh, we left, and we went to the after party. And then did you watch the video at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen it like a billion times. What was your reaction to that? Your first uh, time seeing it, were you I, like? I don't remember the first time I saw My wife I probably think showed I, it to me. I'm, don't remember. I, I think he saw it and he tweeted, well, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if I saw it before or after I tweeted that. That's right. funny. Yeah, so man. where are you now? Are you what, what state are you in? So I live in Wisconsin. I'm like 25 minutes outside Milwaukee. This is where I grew up. I was gone for 10 years, college, and I coached somewhere else right afterwards. Um, and then we came back and my brother and I started a wrestling academy in 2011. And now, now we have five in the state of Wisconsin. It's going wow. really well. That's great. And then yeah. and you're an avid disc golfer. I love, I have 23 holes on my property. I freaking love, you guys disc golf? I love disc golf. golf. Uh, yeah. so, I mean, so is it like calling a, a disc golf frisbee? Is that like calling no, a, don't call don't a frisbee? Don't call a frisbee. People get mad at you. So that's like calling a tattoo machine a tattoo gun. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, I don't, I don't play frisbee on the, it's like a, it's, disc. you're a golfer. Yeah, it's disc not. A, I'm a disc golfer, not a frisbee golf. Not no a frolf. For all. Okay, it's not the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and no, that, I, I I let it slide. I say whatever, whatever you want to call it, call it. But yeah, I love it. I've been playing for like, I took ninth at the Amateur Worlds twice in 2009 and 11. So I'm like super deep. Into and, it. and how many hole in ones do you have? Uh, or dude, ace. I had my vlog. I had my vlog guy out yesterday. Uh, or not yesterday. It was Thursday, maybe. I hit 
chains twice when he was filming. Wow. Oh, good. It was so <laughs> annoying that I didn't get an ace. I think I have 21 total, though. Do you ever play at Oak Grove in Pasadena, California? I had to play it once because that was yeah that was one of the originals. So I did play there one time. That that that's my I I, I have I have some some disc in my car and I go there every blue moon. Yeah, I've never heard you call it a disc. Until because now. my my my, <laughs> dude, my 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 buddy is a professional golfer and I and I called it like let's go play frisbee. He's like I don't play frisbee and, and he, uh, he's pissed, you know. But yeah, right. I know not to say that. And and this is a like you're actually legitimately a professional disc golfer is that right There's well i played pro, pro tournament one time and then i just got too busy with life so i haven't got to um but this guy i, I met uh, maybe it was two years ago a guy named brody smith he, yeah. he did some other things and he decided to be a, a real pro disc golfer like he goes to all the tournaments and he, he's doing he, he got a thousand rating which means he's a world-class pro now like, I'm so jealous. Like that looks like so much fun, but I got these businesses that I can't really leave right now. So maybe when my kids get older, I can go do it for a few months a year. All right. That's and, cool. and that's, yeah. am I correct? One of 10 sports in which you have competed professionally? No, no, no. I, I, I've been top 10 in the world in four sports. Ah, okay. Is MMA, disc golf wrestling, one of them? disc golf, and uh, jujitsu. Nice. Oh wow. I love how disc golf gets in there. That's great. <laughs> and uh and and I heard you're a very avid reader. Do you have your favorite yep. book of all time? Oh, oh great man. question. So I, I wish I don't want to mess with the audio connection. My bookshelf's right over there. I don't want to mess with the audio connection. Um top five. You know, I gave uh what book did I give away uh yesterday? There's one called Thinking Fast and Slow that's one of my favorite. Oh, and the other one I gave away the other day that I read it, I think last year, and it's just it's so good. It's called Anti Fragile by to Seem to Leave. It's really, really Sorry, good. Sorry, say that again. Anti-fragile. Anti-fragile. So the the thought is, the thought is that every system, no matter how big, small, uh, or whatever it is, is like, and, and this is pretty obvious with someone like, um, say, skateboarding or wrestling is like, you have to fail to succeed, right? And you have to get through those failures. You have to deal with the adversity, and you have to see what works and what doesn't yeah. work, and and pick the most efficient path. And so that's kind of like that's that's kind of the theme of anti fragile, but it's like you know with say the restaurant industry, um, you know if there's a downturn in the economy, twenty five percent of them go out of business. Well, those were the weakest twenty five percent, so we needed to get rid of those. Right. And then when the economy comes back up, we'll have new ones filter in, and then the process will happen a whole bunch of times. I think it's like, like survival like a, of the fittest. Yeah, Darwin's theory of evolution. I like it. Yeah. All right. How do I describe that? Uh, if, if I if I describe that wrong, and Talib hears it, and he. Uh, I'd be heartbroken. <laughs> so so the, the, the Jake Paul fight takes place in Los Angeles. Is that correct? No. Uh-uh. Um, it's uh, Atlanta. In Vegas? Oh, Atlanta? Atlanta. Yeah, yeah they, bought, they bought the dang um, uh, the Georgia Falcon Dome. Stadium. The, uh, no, it's not the Georgia Dome. It's called the uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But then there's no fans. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, shit. That's oh. the one that they were making. That's the coolest looking stadium, yeah. dude. The so one that's cool, like yeah. red and it looks like some fucking kind of transformer robot. Yeah, right yeah. off the freeway. Yeah. So All you're right. fighting with no crowd. Is that what you're saying? Correct. No Do crowd. You... I, get, I get 10 guest passes. Jake probably, they love him more than they love me. So they probably gave him, you know, a handful more. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's for his entourage, right? Yes. Yes, because he's so insecure and he needs 27 people around him cheering him at all times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, you know, I, I, I really believe that uh, that you uh, that I love your saying, dude. Like, don't tie the, your ego to the outcome. Is that right? Don't. Tie yeah, your, don't don't tie your ego to the outcome. Yeah, and, and I, I believe that you're that you live that way. I, I think you're yes. gonna be just fine if if you lose. You yeah. know, like, and I also believe that Jake Paul, you know, sort of assuming the role. And, and I'm not even mad at Jake Paul. I like the guy. You know, <laughs> like I like. <sighs> Yeah, he's doing a great job of he's, whatever he's trying to do. He, like he's, he's he, obviously you can't hate on success. You know, yeah. like he's got something figured out. He's really fucking masterful mm -hmm. in what he's doing, and he's he's taking advantage of the opportunity to be successful because people dislike him. You yeah. know, so it's basically mm -hmm. the Colby Covington effect. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, I and, well, I'm curious. I'm curious if he's if it if it like the whole thing is a gimmick. Like, if the whole thing is him playing, I, I, I'm not sold that he's this much of a douchebag. I right. think that he 
it, 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 I don't know. Right? I don't know. That, that's good I, I agree because, with you. I agree yeah. with you. Right? I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I'll take it a step further that when people say Colby Covington is just playing and that, uh, in fact, Colby Covington's this nice guy. Said, but I don't buy that. Because like a nice guy doesn't talk about women that, like that, you know, like insult. No, people. Colby's not playing. I've heard I've heard negative <laughs> reviews on Colby. From really, <laughs> wrestling community's small, and he was three different places. Um, he was at Iowa Central, then he was at um, uh, Iowa for a year. He couldn't hack it there, so then he went to Oregon State, and I, I've heard not positive reviews on him. Right. So people say yeah. Colby Covington's just playing. I don't buy it. I think he's every bit the douche that. Uh, but but that, was he that, like that? That's what. Was he like that That's before his makeover? That's what I've heard. Just kind of low integrity, kind of douchey guy. But he's a great and, fighter. You know, think, great yeah. fighter. And, like, yeah. he's the only fight that uh, we've seen Usman in that, that wasn't, like, kind of... Uh, Marty? I mean, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, fuck that. Martin, like, uh, Usman Mazadal was the worst, most fucking boring fight ever. Yeah. I feel like people are misremembering that because they, they like George so much. That was not a competitive fight. Not at it all. It wasn't. It he, was 50-43. He, he lost every round. 50-43. So he lost every round yes. in two, two 10-8s. 10 10-8s. Yes. And, and, and with all the foot stomping and the up against the fence. like uh, Yeah. I actually thought George missed on that one. I thought, and somehow he got a rematch, which I, I don't think. I, I was against the rematch. I think it doesn't make sense. I think if that night, if on the night he lost, where it said, hey, man, I got six days to prepare for this. I need a real. I need a real shot. This is he, crap. He did I say think that. he would have got it, but he didn't say that for real. He 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 did. He did. He said, Let, "Let's play Only it back. When, let's play it back when I have a full camp." Is is what, yeah. is what he said. But yeah, if, there's, if there was a fucking Usman two that you want to see, it's Covington. Yes. Because that fucking fight was amazing. Mm -hmm. I broke your face. <laughs> I fucking yeah. loved it. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So I uh, so now, um, what are we promoting for you? What, what, can, what are you promoting for me? What, what, what oh, I can, thought I just got to come on and chat with Steve-O. I was so fucking pumped because I watched Jackass for so many years. Dude, I love it, man. I, I was such a big fan. I, would do, I was very much excited to talk to you as well, dude. Like like I said, man, you won me over a long time ago, and, and I just I love your fucking, you know, you're, you're kind of this fucking dorky cool. And I'm into that. <laughs> yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, nice. you're, you're a fucking do dorky cool, and 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 I just love the humility, man. I love uh, don't tie your ego to the outcome, man. That's fucking yeah. fantastic. And, well, uh, yeah, I'll have a good week. I'm gonna go fight Jake Paul, and you guys are going to Alaska, and maybe sometime after that we can either throw some discs together or do. Do you still do pranks, or you don't do pranks anymore? I'm I'm down. It's uh, it's difficult for me to uh, expect yeah. to go under the radar a lot of the mm. time. And, yeah. um, you know, but, but fuck, dude, I'm all about it, man. You know, I got a guy, uh, a good friend of mine's working with, uh, like an Oscar winning fucking costume designer who identifies as a fan and says like, yeah, I can, I can turn you like special effects. Like I can turn you into any person like recognizable person. Yeah. I can, wow. I can walk around as whoever you want. Uh, yeah, make, wow. me, make me into crazy monsters. So I do want to like, like bring back the prank game. Like with you'd have to that. change that your voice. Come back you, as, a... you should come back as Ben Askren and, and fight Jake, <laughs> Jake Paul for him. He's <laughs> 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 like, just kidding. You've been, you, you know, <laughs> how epic would that be? Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. But dude, I would, I would love it, man. Like, uh, get together and do something, man. And, and if uh, I don't know if the podcast, uh, the cryptocurrency, and is that you have another podcast as well? So I do, I do a wrestling podcast. It's with another kind of flow wrestling. They're the biggest media company in wrestling. So we go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings in that. Oh. And uh, are, are you cool with Ariel Hawani? I remember you yeah, talking I'm shit great, about. I'm great with him. You, uh, you had something to say about his uh, ESPN. Dude, he cried, he cried like a little. Ariel, you cried like a little baby. Um, <laughs> this was all the way back in 2012. He talked shit on me after the Douglas Lima fight. And I simply said, here's what I said. He can go back and fight. I said. I want to talk to you. He said, you can't come on my show anymore. I said, good. I want to talk to you as bad, about as bad as you want to come in the cage with me. And he said, I threatened to fight him. I clearly did not threaten to fight him. I just said, I don't want to come on your show. Um, right. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we made up like three years later and we're great now. Yeah. And then you had some playful dig more recently about oh. like, uh, so I think it was you doing a podcast and you said like, oh, my podcast gets more listeners than your something mm -hmm. or other. Yeah. But you guys are cool. 
No, no, we're, yeah, we're cool. He's, I he's really great. like Ariel. I, I, <laughs> yeah. really, I really do like Ariel. No, nope, he's good. I was listening to a chill son and talk about, you know, how when you were fighting in, uh, in it was China or Asia. And he so was, I fought, uh, one. one championship was based out of Singapore, but I fought in Manila, Shanghai, Dubai, Singapore. I think that might be it. And now with one championship on TNT, they're really yeah. Ameri they're really Americanizing it, right? I was like, fuck, I missed them. like MMA. Like, what is this TNT like? Yeah, it will. And and, Ch and Chael was talking about how uh, you know he'd be shooting you a text, and he's like, hey, don't you have a, a fight coming up soon? You're like, yeah, I'm next. <laughs> and and like he's like, that's just the kind of attitude he has, you know. And he's like, well, let me let you go. And you're like, no, no, no. Like, what's up? Let's talk for a little bit. You like, you know, I'm just sitting here before my next fight. Yeah. Are are you? You're just not nervous about going into the ring, or um, that's how you kind of like de-stress, or what? what? Yeah. So de yeah, de-stress. So actually, I mean, it, it could, could get way into this. This is sports psych stuff. So, um, I I'm like an overthinker. Like my mind is hyperactive. And so when I was really young, I had a couple really poor performances because I had anxiety because I was thinking too much. And one of my coaches helped me and it was like, just don't think about it. And that's why I said like, where you're like, you're, you're saying your mind is neutral, where you're not really thinking about anything except execution. And so I had to work on that. And I became really good at it. And, but a lot of it was like, literally when I'm, so we'll say five minutes to six hours before the competition, I don't want to think about the competition. It's not going to help me. Either I figured out how to fight or I have it. Like I'm nothing is going to happen in that time window that's going to make me a better fighter. Either I know how to go fight this guy or I don't. Right? Yeah, but so what if you what if you throw on the eye of the tiger and <laughs> yeah, does, does, does that help? It doesn't help. It doesn't, for me, it makes me crazy, and then I perform like shit. You know, so for me, it's just like about relaxing. Um, Keep my taking my mind off of it, right? Because your mind can just obsess over what could happen, and what could happen is irrelevant to how you're going to perform. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I got really good at it to the point and, you know, it's because I, I worked at it and I got really good at just relaxing and staying calm and thinking about other things. And then when it's time to, to show up, boom, you show up and you compete. Well, then, yeah. so we should schedule an Instagram live with you seven <laughs> minutes before you go out. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm good. I'm not, if you want, yeah, if you want to do it, I listen, I am so game. Uh, because yes, that's kind of like the stuff that I'll be doing. I'll be playing on Twitter or whatever. It might be harder with boxing gloves. So with MMA gloves, you know, <laughs> <laughs> boxing gloves. I don't know how that's going to be possible. I have to like hire an assistant that just plays with my phone or something. I gotta that's know funny. too. Is is the story that that Scott uh, related from Chael? Is it true? Like, did that's you? True. Yeah, because he would. Uh, we fought at the night over there, so he would get up early to watch me, and you know. He, he, listen, he actually just roasted USA Wrestling last week. Or no, it was one championship because he got the wrong time zone. He did the math wrong. Oh. And he roasted one championship, but he would always get the math wrong. He'd be like, hey, you fight? And I'm like, nah, it's not for four hours or something. Like, you're up at 3 a.m., but I don't fight till like 6 a.m. or whatever, you know? <laughs> and so then we would text. And he always, he, you know, he also, he did, habitually stays up for, uh, wrestling tournaments. So, like, a lot of the world championships in wrestling are like in Europe or in Asia or whatever. He'll, you know, he'll be up all night. And so like, you know, sometimes it'll be like 2 a.m. and I'll be texting him about the wrestling because I'm also obsessed with wrestling. And uh, yeah, he's up all night watching. That's, cool. Cool. Uh, that's great. Who, go ahead. Uh, what's your favorite social media platform? I, I see you love Twitter. Twitter by far. Twitter by far. You know, I don't really like Instagram. Uh, the people on there have too low of IQ. The comments are terrible. Um, Twitter is a place where you can kind of interact more and get, I don't want to get full thoughts out because it's only 280 characters, but you can get like a thought and go back and forth with people. Um, I find that to be hard to do on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. I got to check this fair. clubhouse thing out. I heard the clubhouse is cool. I'm actually using it for the first time tonight. So. Oh, uh, right. okay. Yeah. All right. Have you guys done that? I've done no. clubhouse. I, I, it's, you can't save it. It's just audio social That's media, tough. and uh, it's kind of like the comment <laughs> section of a YouTube video, but like out loud, out loud. Yeah. So I, I got off of it. All yeah. right. So, so actually, I've, I heard it got really popular, and then it's kind of went down in the last couple of weeks. But I think like like a month ago, people were going nuts over it. I, yeah. I, I heard about it. I think uh, it's good uh, during a pandemic. A month or two. But. Um, so, uh, so now did it help me with what, what we're promoting? We've got the cryptocurrency podcast. What's that called? I got the fun. It's the funky crypto show. I just, it, go, it goes right onto my, uh, Twitter on Mondays. 
Okay, the Funky Crypto yeah. Show on Ben Askren's Twitter on Monday. So everything starts on Twitter. We're following yeah. <clears throat> Funky Ben. And then where can we Absolutely. watch the fight? <clears throat> uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah, gonna like, be there. I don't hey, need to watch hey, it, guys. I'll be, I'll be there live yeah. in this. Yeah, that's fantastic. They gave me a bunch of money, not a percentage. So fuck who watches <laughs> it. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you know, if they gave me a percentage, I would know exactly how to find uh -huh. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. you'd be driving traffic <laughs> left and right. I that dialed. Yeah. All right. And uh, did did uh, Logan Paul win you over on Impulsive? That was good. Uh, yeah, he was. It was cool. I think they, you know, they thought they were going to fuck with me a little bit. And it was like, it was, uh, it just didn't work. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, you I, did. I, You're I, just into the impenetrable, unfazable, dorky cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where does that come from? Like your composure, even during the Jake Paul or, you know, the press conference, yeah. which like, it's, it's kind of a shame that that's so rare to see in people these days, but just that someone can yeah. keep their composure, stay calm and like let shit just bounce off of them. Like, where does that, mm. have you always been that way? So I, I, I go all the way back for me, and I don't know if you guys remember these days, but uh, someone kids won't list, listen to this, probably won't remember. There was these things called message boards. They kind of <laughs> still exist, but not really, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, fi I was 15 years old, and I was going to the state tournament, high school state tournament in wrestling. And someone said, hey, man, they got these new message boards, and everyone's talking about you. And there were these two seniors, and I was a sophomore, and everyone's saying, these seniors are going to whoop my ass. So I'm like, fuck these people. And I got on there, and I'm like, I'm going to whoop their ass, blah, 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 blah. And all these adults just said, oh, he's the worst guy. He's so cocky. He's this, he's that. And it's like, to me, it was like, you know, again, that, that group mentality, like, you know, I look back, that was a 15-year-old kid. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I just saw some people talking shit, and I talked shit back. So then the next two years of my high school career is like, what can I do to upset these people the most? You know, like this general adult public of Wisconsin wrestling. And so that kind of was my intro to people aren't logical. They're not reasonable. They're just going to go very emotional and see what, you know, say whatever they feel. And it doesn't, it shouldn't really bother me. Right. And I didn't, let, didn't ever let it bother me. Um, and that was kind of the start of it, you know, and then it's just like, I don't know. Why would I let what someone else is saying bother me? I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with who I am, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. Yeah, dude. What a dude. Yeah, dude. Fucking love Sticks it, man. Stone, Funky Ben Asker. <laughs> Funky Ben Asker, man. I'm a fan, brother. I'm a fan. I and, appreciate uh, it. Yeah, and, and by all means, dude, you got my cell number. Fucking, yes, you know, hit me up anytime. I, I'd, I'd love to meet up. I'm rooting for you this weekend, but honestly, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. I'm, I'm happy either way. If you win, I'm super happy for the, the MMA community and, mm -hmm. and the, the sort of the rejoicing the world will do. <laughs> and, and if Jake Paul wins, you know what? Like, let, let him turn into a hype train because it's fascinating. You got it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm a big fan also. Um, I hope he doesn't turn into a hype train. Uh, but there, I've, I'll, I'll acknowledge that's a possibility. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get together and throw some disc golf. Or uh, or maybe we put an outfit on and prank some people. Dude, yeah. I, dude, or work I, on that cauliflower ear. Yeah. I, oh, no, that's I'll give you some cauliflower ear. Dude, yeah, it, everybody dude, says I that. I only just looked at, at your ear, dude. It looks like fucking a disaster. Uh, There's one yeah. ear right there. And then this one, I got a microphone, but there's, yeah, I got, ah, my brothers are way bigger. My brother has, like, they, like, stick way out. I mean, wrestling yeah, is the ticket, it, right? It, wrestling's the way to do it. Dude, that would, yeah. Masvidal fucking failed. <laughs> 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 I didn't get shit for cauliflower here for Everybody failed. Everybody. Was every, 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 everybody's failed, man. Some years just won't do it. But, yeah, we'll, we'll do a bunch of fun shit, man. All right. We'll let you get Sounds into your day, plan. man. Thank you again for this, man. Big, All right, big, that was uh, awesome. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Have a good yeah, day. Man, right on. Thanks, Ben. Peace. Thanks, Ben. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Man, I really like that guy, you know. And I really like you as well for sticking around to the end of the podcast. You know, on the last podcast, Mark Cuban, some of you guys who stuck around to the end were making fun of my skateboarding, and that hurt, man. <laughs> you know, but like I, I took it on the chin. It's all good. I put it out there, and I care about you know my skateboarding. I'm really uh, trying hard. Wait until you see how hard I'm trying. It's crazy, and uh, if it's too bright. When, when you're looking, maybe wear some Steve-O sunglasses. We got them back in stock, dude. Super stuck, man. $9.99, dude. <laughs> <laughs>